Today we will be going over all the tools, techniques, materials, and everything you need to know about how to cut stained glass. We'll begin by going over all the tools and chemicals with demonstrations. We will go over techniques on scoring, breaking, grinding glass. We'll have a follow-up video on how to cut the glass for this stained glass window. Glass cutting is a bit of a misleading term because in reality, the tools are scoring the glass and pressure is applied in a variety of ways to break the glass. The first set of tools are pencil grip cutters. These tools can be held in several grips. This particular cutter is my personal recommendation and it is made of brass. I find it has a good amount of weight for scoring glass effectively and tapping the scores through. It has an oil reservoir to easily dispense oil I am demonstrating cutting with it using a pencil grip. This is another pencil grip cutter, essentially the same shape but made fully of plastic. It's a bit lighter and it is transparent so it's easier to see what level your oil is in the cutter. I am demonstrating this cutter with a fist grip. This is another pencil grip cutter. It's slightly smaller and has a bit of a more ergonomic grip so it might be useful for smaller handed individuals. I'm demonstrating this cutter with the pencil grip. This is the pistol grip cutter. It has a bit of a more ergonomic grip and can be operated with two hands if needed. You can place your middle finger on the cutter head to help guide it as needed. This is a Thomas grip cutter. It's quite small and fits easily in most individuals hands. It also has an oil reservoir. I have seen some individuals gripping this cutter with the curved part between their index and middle finger. This is a custom grip glass cutter. The handle pivots 360 degrees and makes it easy to apply pressure evenly. It also has an oil reservoir and can be adjusted up or down to allow for different size hands to grip it easily. All of the cutters featured here are made by Toyo and have replaceable cutter heads in case yours becomes damaged. These cutter heads normally last an extremely long time and I found that as long as the scoring wheel isn't damaged from dropping it, it shouldn't really need replacing very often, especially if it is used with oil. To replace Simply unscrew, make sure the spring is kept on the cutter handle, insert the new cutter head aligning the screw with the cutout of the cutter handle, and screw down allowing it to bounce with the spring load between the handle and the cutter head. This is the Toyo Super Cutter which is a pistol grip. The cutter head is meant for thicker glass. The cutter head is interchangeable with the other glass scoring tools so if you wish to only have one you could do so. It handles just like the normal pistol grip cutter. These are grozing pliers. They have a flat end on one side and a curved end on the other. The plier side is meant to break glass along the score line, while the curved side is meant to grozer off when a piece is slightly overcut to the point where it's too small of a piece to rescore, but too big of an area to grind down. When breaking glass, rotate the grozers and pull away to separate the glass cleanly. Here, we are removing the area that was overscored so we can clean up the edge on the grinder. These are running pliers. They have a small line in the center to line up with the glass score line. The pliers have a curved shape that separates the glass and the score line. They are equipped with small silicone covers so that the glass isn't damaged on the contact points. The running pliers also have an adjustment screw to limit how much the glass can be pressed for different thicknesses of glass. This is a right angle straight edge. It's very handy for squaring off glass and doing perfectly straight cuts. It has a ledge that is less than 1 8 of an inch tall used at the stop to orient the long edge 90 degrees to the edge of the glass. You can use the edge as a guide to make a score line for a perfect 90 degree cut. This is a typical straight edge. It is handy of course to score straight lines, but also to make measurements in case you are cutting rectangular pieces and can cut without using a pattern or setting up large sheets of glass to be cut into manual sizes that will encompass all the shapes needed instead of handling the larger sheet. The straight edge is cork backed, which makes it very easy for it to be placed on the glass and to stay put instead of sliding around causing inaccuracy. Safety glasses, a little bit better than safety squints, are especially necessary when grinding glass, grosiering, and cutting to avoid getting any glass shards in your eyes. Doesn't sound too fun, right? Gloves can protect your hands from getting cut, especially when handling larger sheets of glass. Table brushes will save your hands and arms from getting splintered with glass on your work surface. They're especially necessary to keep your area clean and also prevent your glass from getting scratched when setting the next sheet down. 
Pattern shears or scissors can be useful when you need to cut up a pattern to trace onto a piece of glass. I find that pattern shears can sometimes leave too much space between the glass pieces when copper foiling, so I tend to use scissors. The pattern shears can be more handy for lead work to leave room for the heart of the lead. Sharpie markers of different colors are useful for different applications. The black will be your most used, but sometimes silver is needed for very dark glass, like black glass, and red can be useful for glass that has many dark marks where you need a contrasting color to see your marks. The abrasive stone is used for knocking down sharp edges. Oil is to be used with all glass scoring tools. Some of the oils featured here have a cap that has a dispensing functionality built into it. This is normally the type that I lean towards. All of the glass scoring tools do come with a small eyedropper that can be used to suck the oil out of the bottle and dispense it into the reservoir, but I find that to be just an extra step. Another common method of applying oil is to fill a small container with a little sponge and some oil and to dip your cutter before each use. You can see now that the cutter has been filled with oil and is dispensing it as pressure is applied. This tool is a strip cutter. In our shop, we have a work table dedicated for strip cutting. But if you don't have room for something like that, you can always set up the strip cutter on a piece of plywood that you can store away when not in use. It's a simple screw down setup. It's useful for whenever you need to cut many pieces that are the same size. Normally these pieces would be a border of a stained glass window or possibly a grid like background. The width of the cut is adjustable with the hand tightened knob. This is a circle cutter. It has a suction cup at the center point and an adjustable knob to determine the size of the circle. On the suction cup, it has a switch that will generate the suction to keep the tool steady on the glass. The handle has a bushing so it will spin freely, allowing you to hold the handle throughout the duration of the cut. General scoring techniques call for the scoring wheel to be perpendicular to the glass. You'll feel the sides of the cutting wheel scrape against the glass, disrupting the score line. You want to score the glass only a single time and not go back over your score line because the glass will have an equal chance of breaking along one or the other, and it's impossible to control which line it will break on. You can hold the glass cutter at a slight angle to the glass, just as long as the cutting wheel is still perpendicular to the glass. Here we will review a few glass breaking techniques. The first is using running pliers. After scoring your glass, line up the center line with the glass score line and squeeze the handles. This will push the glass down on the top edge to the left and right of the score line, with the center pushing up from the bottom directly on the score line. The next way will be using our hands to break the glass. After scoring, place your index fingers underneath the glass on each side of the score line and with your thumbs on top. Doing motions similar to breaking a Hershey's chocolate bar and with enough force, it'll break. Another way is to use grosiering pliers. With the flat end on top, secure the glass and do a rotating motion away from the glass. The final technique is to tap the break through the score line. This is probably the technique that I use the most because it allows you to continue cutting the glass without needing to pick up another tool. Here we are cutting a tight radius. Sometimes when doing complicated cuts like this with a tight radius, you will need to do multiple scores. If you try to break the glass with just one initial score, you will likely break through along the dotted line seen here. Instead, you need to add additional scores within the radius so that you can grosser them out individually. This is one of those things that taking your time now doing it the correct way will keep you from needing to recut glass and wasting time rescoring the glass. You will notice that there is normally a smoother side and a textured side, so you will always want to cut on the smooth side so that your score is consistent and the glass has a greater chance of breaking smoothly along the score line. This clear float glass is perfectly smooth on both sides. The textured clear has a reeded texture every half inch on one side. As long as you cut on the smooth side, it will cut exactly the same as the perfectly smooth glass. This amber glass is a good example of what you will commonly run into with stained glass. Again, identify the smooth side and be sure to cut on that. Listen to the difference between scoring the rough versus the smooth side. Cutting glass to specific sizes and shapes can be accomplished several ways. With transparent glass, you can cut on top of a pattern. 
For both copper foil and lead, you want to cut on the inside of the line to leave a small amount of room for the heart of the lead, or for the solder to fall into when copper foiling. Some glasses are denser and more opaque, however, most of the time you can still get away with cutting the glass on the light table. While this tool is not required, it certainly deserves an honorable mention because it can save you tons of time. Because if you can't see through the glass, there's really only one more option, and that's to use pattern shears. To use pattern shears, you'll need an additional pattern. Normally, if you want to reuse the patterns, you'll need to use a stronger paper such as manila folder paper. For leaded glass, you'll need to use pattern shears so that there is a small amount of room for the heart of the lead. For copper foil, you may use pattern shears or just normal scissors. I find that pattern shears leave quite a bit of room between the pieces, and it ends up using a ton of solder unnecessarily. Once you have the pattern cut, you'll need to trace it on the glass. This is where different colors of Sharpie can come in handy to allow for you to transfer the pattern no matter what the color of the glass is. Once the pattern is transferred, you can cut the glass on the inside of the line. The grinder cleans up edges and removes material when the glass is slightly overcut. It will take a lot of time to grind down large areas, so those pieces are better to be grossed down first, then grinded to finish them off. It's important to wear safety glasses so that you do not get any glass into your eyes. Now we will cover cutting large sheets of glass. This tool is a speed cutter and deserves an honorable mention. It's very useful for cutting larger sheets on repeatable cuts and makes this process much faster. It has an adjustable cutter head as well. We'll also cover a technique that will require a much longer straight edge back to the cork and clamp. The speed cutter head also has an oil reservoir that is activated when pressure is applied, just like your typical glass scoring tool. The way it works is the wheels align with the edge of the glass and it rolls along the corner. Consistent pressure is applied throughout the score just like typical glass cutting. In this case, I'll be breaking the glass with my hands very similar to the smaller pieces. You just have to keep it running all the way until it's completely through, even if it runs off the score line. For the orange glass, we will be using the technique with the straight edge. You'll need to measure and mark two places on the glass to line up your straight edge. Secure one end of the straight edge with the clamp and hold down the other area with your free hand. Then just do a straight and even pressured score just like the others. Here I am breaking the glass with my hands again. For this blue glass, we'll be using the straight edge again. Repeat the same process of measuring, marking, lining up the straight edge with the clamp and scoring. But this time we'll be using the running pliers. I find both of these techniques to provide good results. For the last piece, we'll be doing the straight edge technique once again, but we'll be breaking the glass a little differently. Once the glass has been scored, we will pick up the sheet and drag it to the edge. We will align the score line with the edge of the table and pick it up about one to two inches off the surface of the table. Then we'll rapidly lower the sheet where the edge of the table will create enough force to separate the sheet. I normally use my hands because it's one less step to reach for the running pliers. However, if I am cutting thicker glass, I'll pretty much always use the running pliers because it requires far more force to break, let's just say a quarter inch thick glass versus a one eighth inch thick glass. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you. And if you feel like I've left anything out in this video, be sure to let me know down below. Subscribe to see me put all these tools and techniques into action as I make this honeybee stained glass window. Links to all the tools and chemicals seen in this video will be found in the description below. Thanks for watching.